For a lot of college football players, the biggest decision they'll ever make throughout their entire life is where they decide to go to college. It can greatly impact them positively, but also impact them negatively as well. It's a really difficult decision to make, and a lot of these guys, they don't know whether or not they end up making the right choice. Take Brew McCoy, for example. If the name doesn't sound too familiar, maybe this will. Remember that five star who in 2019 committed to play at USC, and then he decided to transfer to Texas? but then he decided to transfer back to USC? That's Brew McCoy. And you're probably asking, what happened to that guy? Well, he's still at USC, but he didn't play a single snap in 2019. I know you're probably also asking, why did he commit to USC, but then go to Texas, but then go back to USC? Well, it's a pretty crazy story. So without further ado, here is the crazy story and the mystery surrounding Brew McCoy. If you're new to my channel and love college football, don't forget to click that subscribe button and make sure to turn on those notifications so you never miss a video. Now, growing up in Los Angeles, Brew McCoy loved USC football. And I mean, loved USC football. His dad gave him a USC football that he would cuddle every night before he went to bed. And more importantly, he idolized Reggie Bush, as a lot of young kids did, like me for example. Reggie Bush was McCoy's favorite player. He looked up to him, idolized him, wanted to be like him. He even wore number five throughout his entire career, paying tribute to Reggie Bush. When he was playing Pop Warner, before every game, he would watch Reggie Bush highlights. But then again, I think a lot of kids were watching Reggie Bush highlights back in the day, because I know I was. From an early age, Brew was always the competitive kid. His father played football at Northern Illinois, and his mother played volleyball there as well, so it's easy to see where he got it from. When Brew was only three years old, his five-year-old sister was learning how to ride a bike. As any younger brother would, he wanted to make sure he could learn to ride before she could. And he did. Flash forward seven years. There was this kid in Palos Verdes that everyone referred to as Touchdown Tommy because this kid would always get touchdowns. Well, Brew didn't like this and he made it his number one motivation to make sure that whenever he played him, he didn't score a single touchdown. And when the two met up, McCoy was true to his word. He held touchdown Tommy to zero touchdowns, while also holding him to zero total yards as well. Two years later, Brew was in the national championship with his Pop Warner team. Prior to the game, he went into the center of the huddle, looked every teammate in the eye, and yelled, big time players make big time plays, let's go. Now, although he was only in eighth grade, McCoy was already showing early signs that he would blossom into something huge. Now, when it was time for high school football, McCoy opted to bypass playing for his hometown school of Palos Verdes and opted to go to a school that would give him a much better opportunity to play college football. He decided to attend Modern Day, a high school powerhouse that has sent hundreds of players to college football and has sent a good number of players to the NFL. And McCoy looked like he'd be next in line. Every year he played, his numbers got significantly better. During his sophomore season, McCoy caught 28 passes for 400 yards and 5 touchdowns. The following year, he caught 46 passes for 770 yards and 11 touchdowns. Then, during his senior campaign, McCoy caught 78 passes for 1,400 yards and 18 touchdowns. He caught the eye of scouts everywhere, earning a 5-star rating and was the number 9 overall player in the 2019 class according to 24-7 Sports. McCoy had a number of suitors as he was recruited by Alabama, Florida State, Georgia, Ohio State, Oregon, Washington, and Texas. Now, although USC was his dream school since a young age, he was having some doubt about going there. Offensive coordinator T. Martin was stripped of play calling duties with a month left in the season and was fired a few days after a season ending loss to Notre Dame that sealed USC's first losing record since 2000. Things looked like they were an absolute mess at USC. Other programs, Texas in particular, continued to make compelling cases to McCoy. He was on a visit to Austin in September of 2018 when the Longhorns dismantled USC 37-14, part of a breakthrough season that ended up with a Sugar Bowl victory. McCoy entered the final stretch of his recruitment, stressing over the decision ahead. McCoy's mom talked about what was going through her son's head leading up to his decision. Things kept happening with USC like, what's going on? Is this a sign? I think he was like, I waited my whole life to go here, maybe it's not meant to be. The process was so stressful. They had a little bit of a rough year the year before, and I think he was just like, what am I doing? Am I making the right decision because this is what I dreamt about my whole life? Was I open enough to my other recruiting trips to other schools? Then, USC made a coaching decision that ultimately won Brew McCoy over, and led to him signing with his hometown Trojans. Right after being fired by Texas Tech, USC swooped in and picked up one of the biggest names in the coaching market. Cliff Kingsbury. 
he was the new Trojans offensive coordinator. Kingsbury McCoy quickly became close as he went to watch McCoy in person for modern day's state championship win and paid an in-home visit to the McCoy family. Brew was over the top with Kingsbury and the two developed a great relationship. McCoy graduated early from modern day and signed with USC in December of 2018, keeping his decision quiet until January when he announced that he was going to USC at the All-American Bowl in San Antonio. And just like that, things were looking really good for USC moving forward. But then that same weekend, rumors began to swirl about Cliff Kingsbury possibly going to the NFL. Shortly after, it was announced that Kingsbury would be the new head coach of the Arizona Cardinals. Brew's father said that he remembers driving on the 110 freeway when Brew checked his phone from the back of the car and received the news that Kingsbury was on his way to become the new head coach of the Cardinals. And mind you, this happened just one day after Brew enrolled for classes at USC. Just one day. And just like that, the man that was pretty much responsible for Brew McCoy signing with USC was gone. And for good reason, Brew felt betrayed. During the recruiting process, McCoy would constantly ask Kingsbury if he had any plans of moving up to the NFL. And every time, Kingsbury told him no. Now, at the time, there was no interest by NFL teams in regards to the former Texas Tech coach, so it looked like Kingsbury would not have to worry about that. But the second the NFL called, Kingsbury took the job, and for good reason. Now, with everything all of a sudden happening so fast, Brew McCoy was starting to have doubts about going to USC. He was beginning to wonder if he made the right decision. Three more weeks would pass by before Clay Hilton hired a new offensive coordinator. Then, in February, USC strength and conditioning coach Ivan Lewis left to take the same job with the Seattle Seahawks. Add in the constant speculation about Clay Hilton's job status, status, things were all over the place at USC. McCoy said he felt very hurried to get to school. He said he felt as if USC was intentionally rushing him back to get to campus and begin his first class so his eligibility could start. So that way, if he left, he would be classified as a transfer. This made him feel even more betrayed. While in Cancun for a family wedding, McCoy shared some shocking news with his parents. He told them he wanted to transfer to Texas and leave USC. Now, for good reason, his parents were shocked as they didn't see this coming. They told him that everything was going to be okay and to just stick it out and stay at USC. Because as I mentioned, growing up this entire family was USC fans, so the fact that they were going to get to watch their son play for their dream school while he gets to stay close to home, it was a dream situation for them, so I understand why they wouldn't want him to go, you know, to Austin, Texas. But as his parents, they told him they'd respect his decision and support him no matter what. On January 24th of 2019, McCoy's decision became official. He entered the transfer portal and became a Texas Longhorn. There was a lot of excitement surrounding McCoy and the Longhorns for the 2019 season. He was the highest rated player in the recruiting class on top of an already elite group of receiver signees. He received significant attention from the press and the program devoted a lot of resources to him, particularly the compliance staffers who worked to get him immediately eligible for the 2019 season. McCoy, he impressed during spring practice and was in line to receive playing time as a true freshman. Everything was looking promising for him and he looked ready to begin his career. Only there was one big problem. Deep down, McCoy was starting to think he made the wrong decision. Brew McCoy was enjoying his time at Texas. He liked the players, he liked the coaches, everything was going well. But the problem was, it wasn't USC. To him, it just didn't feel like home. He finished classes at Texas in late May and came back home while the football team was on break in between classes and summer workouts. His mother went to go pick him up from the airport, but although he was only supposed to be home for a few days, his mom noticed him carrying a bag that suggested he was going to be home for a little bit longer. The following day, McCoy approached his mother and told her that he's not going back to Austin and that he had made a mistake. He wanted to come back and play for USC. Now, things at this point were extremely difficult because Texas had already helped the family secure an attorney to grant McCoy's immediate eligibility waiver with the NCAA, and the school had already begun building its case to try to get him on the field in the fall. Now, McCoy has the decision of a lifetime to make. Does he stay at Texas, where again, everything's fine, and he'll likely have a chance to play in the fall, but risk being miserable for the next three to four years there? Or does he opt to transfer back to USC, that way he's home, he's close to family, and he knows he's making the right decision. All while facing a lot of scrutiny, not only from Texas fans, but probably from USC fans again. After the USC fan base turned their back on him, could he handle a second fan base doing the same? Arguably a more passionate fan base? This was a decision an 18 year old kid had to make. McCoy announced he was leaving Texas on May 31st and entered the transfer portal. A number of different schools reached out, but it didn't matter. Brew was focused on USC, and shortly after he entered the portal, he got a call from USC head coach Clay Helton. On June 11th, USC announced that their top recruit, who had left them months earlier, was returning home to Los Angeles. And as expected, the backlash came. McCoy received death threats. His family received them too. Everywhere anyone in the family went, they were constantly being asked, 
What's going on with their kid? Why is he so indecisive? Why can't he make up his mind? They'd call him a head case. They'd say that no NFL team is going to want to touch him in a few years. People dehumanize me. It's no excuse, but I was 18. I'm only 19 now. I don't think anyone at 18 really has it all figured out. Arrogant 18 year old me thought, I'll just go to Texas. USC didn't do me right. It was arrogant of me. I made a rash mistake. And he was right. He had made a mistake, but now he was trying to make everything right. And he was right. He made a mistake. He didn't fully think through his plan of leaving USC and ultimately he decided it was the right thing to go back home. Now he had to go back to USC and deal with former coaches, former players, and fans. Just imagine how awkward that must have been. Like imagine, you know, you were at SC, then you say, you know what, I'm going to head to Texas. I'm leaving you guys. And then you decide to come back. Like, that must have been brutal. According to McCoy, there were teammates that welcomed him back with open arms, but there were some that were upset with him because they felt as if he turned his back on the team. But things slowly got back to normal and McCoy looked ready to play in 2019 for his hometown team. But then another obstacle happened. He arrived at USC in great shape, but he began to feel really drained after every workout. He was sweating uncontrollably every day. Then after one workout, a trainer looked at his temperature. It was 101. It stayed that way over the next few days, even going up to 102. Sometime between him going from Texas to LA, Brew had come down with mono. He was also diagnosed with strep throat. When he was finished with his antibiotics, his fever remained. Two more weeks passed and Brew's fever had stuck around for a month. He'd wake up at 6am, walk to the training facility, have his temperature taken, and find out it was still over 100. On another trip to the doctor, McCoy tested positive for Legionella, which causes an illness similar to pneumonia. He was on another antibiotic for two weeks. McCoy had an enormous amount of blood drawn. He had heart scans, brain scans, and he was in the hospital for three days having to get IVs because he sweated so much he would begin to cramp. More than anything, McCoy wanted to get back onto the field with his teammates, but he couldn't. His body wouldn't allow him to. He didn't even have enough strength to stand on the sidelines with his teams for the games. Now, not being out there, speculation began to grow as to what was happening with McCoy. Fans started thinking, is he giving up on the team yet again? And now, everyone thought he turned his back on USC. After months and months of agonizing pain, his illness finally began to go away in October of 2019. However, McCoy missed the entire 2019 season and never took a snap for USC. So, over the course of less than a year, McCoy committed to USC, then decided to leave and transfer to Texas, then decided he's going to leave and transfer back to USC, and then he got a really, really, really bad illness. Again, this is all over the course of, what, like 9 to 10 months? That is awful for an 18-year-old kid. However, USC stood by his side every step of the way. In December, as USC was preparing for the Holiday Bowl, McCoy was a full participant in practice for the first time. Here's what offensive coordinator Graham Harrell had to say about McCoy getting back on the field. It's kind of like getting a new toy at Christmas. You get to kind of see something new and something different. It's awesome to see. When he goes, you can see why he's so special. He has twitch. He's a big body. To have the skills and change direction and move like he does, it's fun to watch. He's going to be a very special player here. Brew McCoy is going to enter the 2020 college football season as a member of the USC Trojans. Now, if I would have made that statement a day after he committed, that wouldn't have seemed crazy at all. But after everything that's transpired over the last year and a half, it's remarkable. The journey to get to that statement was anything but ordinary. McCoy has gone through more than what majority of 19 year olds have to go through, or what majority of people just have to go through in general. He's had the spotlight on him from an early age. He followed his heart not once, but twice, doing what he truly believed was the right decision. And he battled a scary illness, but failed to ever give up. Now, regardless of whether or not there's a college football season in 2020, McCoy is finally ready to step on a field at the Coliseum as a member of the USC Trojans, fulfilling what has been a lifelong dream for him. Brew McCoy has overcome a lot of adversity to get to this point. And whenever he has the chance to finally show what he's worth, he'll be more than ready.